welcome to Good Libations, our show about mixology. And again, I'm Ethel Andrews. I'm a mixologist, which, as we know, is a name for an upscale bartender, supposedly. Although it's taken on a bit of a elitist term in recent times, so <clears throat> sometimes I just revert to calling myself a bartender. But nevertheless, we are on an adventure right now, a Brazilian adventure, of using cachaça in our drinks, which is a lovely distilled spirit that is indigenous to Brazil. And again, it is distilled from fermented sugarcane, unlike rum, which is distilled from molasses and byproducts of sugarcane. So the, the taste again of cachaça is entirely different from rum. It is more complex. It has herbaceous notes. It has grassy notes. It has some fruit in it. And it blends with many different things and makes really exotic, interesting drinks that are beyond the scope of what most Americans have experienced. And interestingly enough, we discussed this aspect too, that most of the people um, who brought sugarcane to Brazil were from the island of Madeira. And somewhat different from what we have here in the United States. Most of our Portuguese, especially here in California, come from the Azores. They're a different element of people. They're slightly genetically different from mainland Portuguese and also the peoples of Madeira. But anyway, that's a, a so-called uh, history and you might say um, genetics lesson about the Brazilian Portuguese. Anyway, we're going to set about making another cocktail using cachaça. And this one is called the um, Coco Batida. And it actually incorporates some coconut liqueur, some coffee liqueur, or if you prefer, you could also use a chocolate liqueur, and it uses the cachaça, and also a little bit of orange liqueur, and milk, believe it or not. And you don't need to add any sugar to this drink because it would be cloying beyond belief if you did. And we're going to make it in the shaker because this is a drink that we're going to divest in a glass. So the eye appeal is there, and it's a very worthy cocktail, very good. And again, because the flavor of cachaça is different, it tastes different from like a, a Kiyoki coffee, certainly different from a Brandy Alexander, but it has some elements in common with those drinks. But anyway, we're going to set about making it, and I'm going to go ahead and put some ice in the shaker here to get this going. And as I've endlessly lectured before with ice storage, make sure that you have good ice storage with your cocktails, meaning that you don't want your ice to start to melt because then it's going to dilute the drink and add an unpleasant aspect to it. Nobody wants a dilute drink. That's why when, when we did the episode about um, nitrogen infused drinks, that's so advantageous because you have no ice and no melting, and you have a super cold beverage. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and add the cachaça here. And I'm going to go ahead and add it to the shaker directly. And this is a pretty potent drink. I'm going to add a hint, and just a hint, of orange liqueur. And I personally would rather use orange curacao but I didn't have any, so I'm using triple sec. You could also use Cointreau, any orange-infused liqueur. And then we're going to add the coconut-infused liqueur. And we don't want it to overpower the cachaça, so we're not adding massive quantities of it. And then finally, we're going to add the coffee. Or, as I mentioned, we could also use a a um, chocolate liqueur for this like you would for an Alexander. And then finally we're going to add some milk to this. And um, a word of warning, you could use heavy cream but if you do you might get some odd separation in globules in the drink which I appeal wise is not pleasant at all. So we're just going to use milk in this. And not a lot, but enough. 
And this can also be made as a coffee beverage as well, but we're going to do it the cold way this time. So I'm going to go ahead and shake this and then divest it in a glass. And this is a beverage I particularly enjoy because it's not sickly sweet, but it serves very well as a dessert beverage. And again, you're using the wonderful taste and utilizing the wonderful taste, I should say, of the cachaça. So this particular glass, I think, highlights the appearance very well. And again, this is a potent drink. This is not one for sissies. So I'm going to give it a try and see if it lives up to the hype. Oh, that is wonderful. <laughs> if I say so myself, the cocoa batita. And I would say the blending of the ingredients with the cachaça is about in the right proportion. And I'm the queen of the free pour, as we all know. I don't like to measure drinks or measure the liquors that I put into a drink, but you could probably kind of guesstimate proportions from what I poured. But that is an excellent drink. That is truly enjoyable, very different. Sweet without being cloying. And again, to review, we use cachaça, and you could use either coffee or chocolate liqueur. We used orange liqueur, and we used cocoa, coconut liqueur, and milk, and cachaça. So, Coco Batista, or Batita, I should say. Very, very nice. And if you want to see how good an establishment is that serves cocktails, you might want to try to order some of these drinks and see if they make them there. Because these are drinks that you will find if you went to, we'll say like Rio or Sao Paulo in Brazil. And in watering holes on the eastern seaboard and in Florida where you have more likelihood of finding people from Brazil, you're likely to find these drinks. But thoroughly enjoyable and thoroughly unique. And the biggest ingredient is the cachaça followed by the milk. And I would say the coffee or cocoa, then the orange liqueur, and then the cocoa liqueur proportion-wise. So that gives you an idea of the blending of the portions in this particular cocktail. Very, very enjoyable. And glassware is important. We want the glassware to exhibit the cocktail nicely. And a small glass like this or a half-sized old-fashioned glass would be good. Or even a martini glass, a conventional martini glass, would be very suitable for this cocktail. And again, as I always mention on my programs, we have a sense of responsibility towards our community as a whole. So let's enjoy our cocktails, but let's not drink to an excess. And if we're really festive and really partying, let's make sure we have a designated driver or some way of getting home so that we're not creating a hazard on the highways. Because that is not right, it's not fair, and it's not even good for us. And if you really enjoy a cocktail, you're going to be savoring it and sipping it, not downing it like you're a fraternity brother at a party. So, cachaça is relatively rare. Um, Bevmo has cachaça, so does Total Wine and Spirits, but your average liquor merchant probably does not, or if they do, they probably have one brand only. But thank you again for tuning into another episode of Good Libations, another adventure in the world of mixology and cocktails. And it shows again that these things are not out of reach for anyone. Thank you again for tuning in. Once again, I'm Ethel Andrews. Goodbye.